Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Now, now we are almost at the end of the Kentucky Derby Trail. Well, yeah, it's been a long trail, Matt. We've had some hardships along the way, but we're uh, we're getting there. We've ha- we've also had a lot of winners. What'd you think of last week's races? Uh, Sierra Leone has been my number one for a while. I thought he looked very good at Keeneland. Yes, he did look very good, Brian. Uh, uh, you know, we haven't had too many horses on the Derby Trail uh, to come back and you know and and run another big one. So uh, this guy's got two very impressive races in a row picks were pretty good last week too folks i hope you had a good day last weekend yeah resilience and stronghold weren't bad either on opposite coast matt this week folks we're going to do long shots we're going to look into the kentucky derby live long shots according to us now in the kentucky derby matt we only identified four horses likely to be under 10 to 1 that's because the 20 horse field lots of good odds out there Two clear favorites in Fierceness and Sierra Leone. The only two other horses we took off the board were Forever Young, the Japanese undefeated horse who's been winning in Saudi Arabia and Dubai, and Catching Freedom, the Louisiana Derby. We think they could just under 10 to 1. So we took those four horses off the board. The other 16 open, and Matt and I produced our favorite long shots. Matt, do you want to go for Okay, sure, Brian. Uh, um, I'm going to start my list uh, with Resilience. I think Resilience ran a nice race in the Wood Memorial. And I should preface my uh, discussion of my long shot choices in the Derby by saying, you know, I am a guy that does not bet the Derby to win, place, and show. I am uh, typically a trifecta player. So when I'm uh, talking about long shots here, I'm not necessarily expecting them to win, but I sure would like them to finish in the top three and, and or the top four if you are a super fecta player. But back to resilience, I thought he went, ran a nice race. That was your top pick in there, Brian, and uh, helped me uh, to – to cash a nice bet after the Wood Memorial. Uh, um, I thought that his fourth place finish in the Risen Star um, gave me a feeling that he was going to run good because he ran fourth in that race, but it was fourth behind three previous winners on the Kentucky Derby Trail, including Sierra Leone. Yeah, the, the Risen Star was, uh, we're still saying the Risen Star was the best prep of the whole year. And, and I think that's been bore out by what's been happening with the horses that have come out of that Risen Star and all run good races, or almost everyone has run a good race out of that Risen Star. Resilience being one of them. Yeah, it was my top pick. Uh, I, I was hoping for a little higher than nine to two, but it wasn't bad. I think he's an approving horse for, for Bill Mott, the son of Intuship. Um, I do see a couple red flags for me. One, I wonder the wood, did he, did he, the wood? He'll, he'll certainly have to, uh, move forward in the Kentucky Derby again, but he's going in the right direction. He's also, also 0 for 2 at church, two year old. One of those races was pretty good. So I can't argue with your first one. Who's number two on your list, Matt? I've got just a touch as uh, the second one on my list, another one of the Brad Cox runners. Again, you know, emphasizing what I said before, I thought just the touch ran a nice second place finish in the uh, bluegrass. I guess looked like a winner for a while till, uh, uh, till uh, Sierra Le- Leone came flying down the stretch. And before that, he was second in the Gotham. So, uh, not wins lately, but the kind that could get into uh, the exotics at a good price. Now, Matt, last year when we did this, I had number one long shot. Unfortunately, with scratches, two Phil's odds went down a little bit. He was under one, of course, when the open the starting gates. But I, I do think just a touch is going to get bet a little bit. 
I have them as the fifth choice. You see our odds there, folks. That's our horse center early odds, 12 to 1. I think just a touch could get bet a little bit more. But even as the fifth choice, you probably get double digits. But a horse people are talking about, he's only had three races, Matt. And second in the Gotham, he finished well. Sierra Leone kind of blew his doors off late, which was me, of course. But just a touch could be be moving forward at the right time who's your third and funk shot for the kentucky derby my third is uh track phantom and here's a horse that in my eyes is certainly going to be forgotten overlooked it's been a while since uh he ran he ran last in the louisiana derby um had those victories earlier on uh, uh he was second in that risen star uh, closest to Sierra Leone, won Le Comp, won the Gun Runner. So he's going to come into the Derby as a relatively fresh horse. Yeah, and he's got experience. He's got experience at Churchill Downs. He's got pretty graded stakes experience. Anybody in the field, he, he's a quality speed horse. Is this on a quality road? I agree. I think he is going to be ignored. You see him at 25 to 1 on our morning line. Uh, I do worry that he quite get the job done in the Risen Star and then couldn't quite get the job in the Louisiana Derby. How's he going to do it with even more speed in the Kentucky Derby? I don't know. But the odds versus the quality, I think you've identified a really good wits that are probably going to be at least 25 to 1. Derby Day, and, and those are good odds on a good horse. And uh, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, I, I go back to 1985, Matt, when Eternal Prince didn't get out of the starting gate in the Derby, spend a buck, all of a sudden had the lead to himself, made life easier. If for whatever reason, Track Phantom does, maybe Fierceness has some trouble at the start, like he's had in a few races, Track Phantom becomes an interesting long shot. Let's take a my long shots, Matt. And to tell you the truth, there are a lot of horses we considered for this list. Uh, horses like Endlessly and, and Doorknock, I could see running very good races uh, that are going to be good odds. But here are my three. Mystic Dan is on top. I, I still worry about being a son at Golden Sense at 10 furlongs. But I really liked what I saw from the Kenny McPeak runner in the Arkansas Derby because he got knocked pretty hard in the backstretch there. He was pushed back, shuffled back farther than he ever wanted to be. For him to rally on to third behind Muth, I think is a good sign. I think he's uh, learning how to rate properly, and I think he's kind of an explosive horse. He's got some explosive wins. One Churchill sprinting last year, and of course that Southwest this year. With the trouble, and he could bounce back Kentucky Derby Day. Yeah, and I certainly think you're going to get really good odds on that horse, uh, uh, Brian. We've got him at 25 to 1 on our uh, horse center uh, morning line. Uh, you know, I, I, I do I do want to say that, and, and this goes for Sierra Leone uh, also, that, you know, closers and deep closers uh, in the Kentucky Derby are not the running style that has been most successful in recent years. It is horses that are uh, uh, on the lead or pressing the pace who have won most of them. However, every year is a different year. Yeah, every year is a different year. And we've seen enough horses come from uh, off the pace for me not to worry about it, especially if I see a strong pace developing, which looks pretty good this year. By the way, I don't think Mystic Dan is a deep closer. Again, I think he was pushed uh, farther back in the Arkansas Derby than he ever wanted to be or would have been without the trouble. The next horse on my list probably won't be a big long shot, kind of like Matt and just a touch. Uh, Stronghold is a developing son of Ghost Zapper for trainer Phil D'Amato. Uh, Stronghold ran a very good race at Churchill Downs. I, I call it the key maiden race of the year, actually, when he beat both Resilience and Track Phantom in a one-mile maiden at Churchill Downs last year. So like Mystic Dan, he's got good Churchill Downs experience. Two for two this year. I think he's getting better. He's a tactical, versatile kind of runner who can sit in the middle of the pack and make a move. And he's, he's a, he looks like a game runner, too, Matt. He's not afraid to uh, mix it up in the stretch. 
Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And Stronghold was my top pick uh, heading into the Santa Anitas. This is a horse that I've liked for a long time. Uh, going back to uh, what you were talking about for that nice allowance win uh, as a two-year-old. And then when he was second in the Bob Hope, only behind Nisos, who many consider still be the best three-year-old uh, in this year's class. Yeah, Stronghold is an up-and-comer for sure. It's nice to see a ghost sapper on our list. My last long shot is Honor Marie. I, I couldn't dismiss Honor Marie. Speaking about horses with good form at Churchill Downs, Honor Marie fits the bill. Three nice races as a two-year-old for trainer uh, Whit Beckman. And uh, this year, I think he's moving forward. Uh, the first race, he caught a sloppy track in the uh, Risen Star. Still passed a lot of horses to, to be fifth, but... Uh, uh, maybe didn't get as much out of that as he needed. Then he ran up a better race in the Louisiana Derby. He looks like the kind of horse to me who's going to be best third try back after a good effort. Yeah, I know Catching Freedom was better than him late in the Louisiana Derby, but Catching Freedom had more bottom to him uh, from earlier in the three-year-old season. I think Honor Marie can step forward with that good Churchill Downs experience. A long shot for me. Yeah, and he's been around on the Derby Trail a lot longer uh, than many of these horses. Going back to, uh, you mentioned his experience at Churchill Downs when he won the Kentucky Jockey Club. Yeah, and, and like like I mentioned already, Matt, a bunch of bunch of interesting horses here. We're talking about 16 horses that are 10 to 1 or higher. Uh, a bunch of interesting long shots, but these are our favorites as of now. We're also going to go right into the Phillies. Uh, not as deep a dive, a smaller race, 14 horses will be in the Kentucky Oaks. And I think right now it's very interesting because 15 and 16, they're kind of tied 13, 14, 15 on the point list. But 15 and 16, because of graded stakes earnings, are two very interesting. Ways and Means, who I think would be one of the favorites if she gets in, is 15 currently. And our pretty woman. 16 they're losing out on the tie break right now so they need a few defections or one defection really deep race I, I i could see a four to one favorite versus under 10 to one in here so we had to go down the list a little bit to find double double long shots for the kentucky o take a look at yours Sure, Brian. And, and I, just a little bit more about uh, mentioning ways and means. It's my understanding that the... Uh, Oaks long shot. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brian. And, and my understanding, uh, talking a little bit more about ways and means that you brought up, is that uh, uh, Chad Brown uh, got a horse into, at least points-wise, into the Oaks uh, this past weekend. And it's likely that he's not going to run that horse in the Oaks which is going to ha help ways and means. Anyway, on to my Oaks uh, long shots. Uh, I'll let me start with uh, Into Champagne that we have talked about a couple times uh, on this show. It's got nice tactical speed. Um, again, a horse, uh, no wins recently, a third in the Gulfstream Oaks and a second in the Devona Dale, um, a horse that could get a piece of things in the, uh, run for the lilies yeah and ian wilkes is stabled at churchill town so I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what into champagne does coming back to churchill towns even though she never raced at churchill towns yet uh that's her home base and into champagne ran some good races at Gulfstream. last time she was pretty much battling on the lead i, I really don't think that's her best game when she was third pretty but well beaten third in the Gulfstream park oaks you're going to see some big odds after that defeat and she's a filigree that could pop up on a surprisingly good race in the Kentucky Oaks. Getting back to Chad Brown's situation, that's regular regulatory risk, who he might not run would be a long shot. That would move ways and means to four in, and our pretty would only need one more spot or defection to get in if that happens. Who's your second Oaks live long shot, Matt? My second uh, Oaks long shot is Jody's pride uh jody's pride a horse that likes to uh press the pace here's one that is certainly going to get overlooked after that seventh place 
finish in the Ashland, but prior to that, had a win uh, in the Busher at Aqueduct and was second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. If if Jody's Pride can get back to those races, she's going to be a live long shot. Yeah, and I agree with you on both of these. I'm expecting big odds. Again, it's going to be a deep field with a ton of fillies to bet. And these two fillies getting beaten last time. Jody's Pride came up empty when the real running began, unfortunately, in the Ashland. But every other race she's run, very good. If you draw a line through that Ashland for whatever reason, wasn't her day, she comes back to her best. Jody's Pride is one to certainly consider on Kentucky Oaks Day. All right, Matt, we'll, we'll run to my top Oaks long, long shots. And as you may have guessed, I'm trying to get our pretty woman into the field. Uh, I only have her 10 to 1. That, that could be literally like the sixth choice, uh, but uh, double digit horses. So they are not as long as Matt's. Uh, my first one is Where's My Ring? And this is a filly uh, who basically, Val Brinkerhoff, has been running this filly back and forth between maidens and stakes races, greatest stakes races. She ran in the Breeders' Cup as a maiden. Um, and she had run several good races. I, I think they knew the talent was there, but she just never broke through before. All of a sudden, they ship her out of Southern California in a really big race in the Gazelle. I was impressed because she didn't look all that comfortable stalking the pace. She looked like she was a little bit headstrong uh, early on in that Gazelle. And then she was a powerful winner in, in decent time in the Gazelle. I don't think She's going to get a ton of action because I think people are going to uh, poo-poo the gazelle as opposed to the Ashland and, and, and the Fantasy and the Gulfstream Park Oaks. So I think Where's My Ring will be double digits if she can uh, come back to that gazelle performance. I think she's got a shot, Matt. Yeah, I agree, Brian. I think she did want, run a really nice race in the gazelle considering, uh, you know, she had run a number of races, but... She was still a maiden going into that into that gazelle. Yeah, yeah. She was 0 for 7. So I'm I'm picking a horse who started her career 0 for 7 as a live long shot, but I think that's how good the gazelle was. Uh the next one is kind of an obvious horse, our pretty woman. But again, as like the sixth choice, I think she's probably gonna be double digits if she gets in. Steve Vasmussen trains this daughter Medagliadoro. Uh she won a maiden. In January at Fairgrounds, allowance in February at Fairgrounds, and then she was a very second in her graded stakes debut to maybe the likely favorite in Tarifa last time in the Fairground Oaks. She's got good speed. Uh, Medagliadoro, we've seen it over and over again with really good fillies. Our pretty woman could be this good, and as the sixth choice, I, I, I think she'd be on my tickets if she gets in. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, um, uh, a quality horse uh, for uh, Steve Asmussen uh, with uh, 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 some nice performances in the past. That second in the fairground, Oaks, um, pretty uh, pretty woman uh, is an interesting one. Probably going to be uh, 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 a little bit more than the ten to one, twelve to one range in my eyes. Well, with so many horses to bet, I, I think there's a real chance that that happens, Matt. And again, Tarifa, uh, Leslie's Rose, of course, an impressive Ashland winner. Just FYI, I thought it was a very good return race in that race. Uh, Torpedo Anna. There's just so many horses that you can bet in this Oaks that I think we are going to see some really nice odds for some good fillies in the Oaks. Should be a good betting race. All right, Matt. Our race of the week we haven't touched on yet, and uh, it, it is back at Keeneland again. We're going back to Keeneland for the Lexington Stakes. We're having a little issue with the graphics as thunder rumble around here in Kentucky. Bear with us, folks. There's the Lexington Stakes graphic. Uh, the field of 10, Matt. This is race 10 on Saturday at Keeneland. Again, another couple of nice days here with a lot of graded stakes Friday and Saturday at Keeneland. This is the last Kentucky Derby uh prep and, and points are available and at least one horse still has a chance to get into the derby depending on the lexington map yeah i think i think that's the case uh 20 points to the winner for this 
Lexington. You know, there there are always defections uh, in the field over these next few weeks, and no doubt there will be some uh, uh, during this time period. I'm pretty sure at this point, deterministic, who is uh, is high on the points list, is not going to run in the Kentucky Derby under any circumstances. After talking to Christophe Clement, after his uh, disappointing performance in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, that makes sense. And and Hades is the one closest to getting in with a good uh, Lexington performance, Matt. Hades was, of course, an upset winner of the Holy Bull, two starts back, in which he beat not only Fierceness, he also beat Dom Domestic Product in that race, who came back and won the Tampa Bay Derby. Hades had a good trip that day in the uh, Holy Bull. And then in the Florida Derby, he had anything but a good trip. Just kept getting shuffled back as fierceness ran out. He was never going to beat fierceness for sure in the Florida Derby, but I think he could have run a lot better had it been a better trip. Interestingly, he'll have blinkers on for this test in the Lexington. Yeah, uh, that is interesting. He's a Florida bred. Uh, um, and, you know, I think certainly he'll have stuff to, to prove in this Lexington, can he bounce back from the Florida Derby, pick up the 20 points and have a chance to get into the Derby? Uh, he won his first three races. He's one of two horses that won the won their first three races in their career, along with the favorite in the race. Yeah, the, the favorite, Matt, is actually number two, the wine steward. Unfortunately, by the way, he was one of my favorite juveniles of last year, this New York bred son of Vino Rosso. Uh, unfortunately, the wine steward has been away now for over six months. He is coming back to a track, though, at Keeneland, where he's run well in the past. Yes, uh, that's for sure. And, and it, it's doubtful that uh, the wine steward will get into the Derby. He picked up five. Derby points as a two-year-old when he ran second in the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland that you were referring to. He's a New York bred. He won a, uh, a, a New York bred stakes race and a New York bred allowance for uh, trainer Michael Maker, had one of the highest uh, speed figures in that race. And in my eyes, well, we'll see when he comes back from that uh, long layoff all the way back to October. If he can make a step forward, as horses often do, uh, go, moving from two-year-old year to three-year-old year, um, he could be very, very tough in the Lexington and moving forward in whatever would will be ahead for that three-year-old. Yeah, I personally, I don't think they have any intention of running in the Kentucky Derby at this late date. But the wine steward could be a real player this year on the three-year-old uh, uh, season after the Derby. And we uh, are happy to see him back in the Lexington. I was a little surprised that he's a, a pretty clear uh, morning line favorite being off for over six months. But uh, yeah, three three wins, just impressive wins to start his career. And then a very game second one breeders futurity just behind the lock last year at Caneland. Other horses of note here, uh, Matt, liberal arts, liberal arts, uh, they're coming back on short rest. Irad Ortiz Jr. is going to hop aboard uh, liberal arts, the son of Arrogate. And uh, Bobby Medina wants to get this horse in the Kentucky Derby, obviously, coming back after only two weeks. Where he was, uh, looked like a horse who didn't want any part of the race at one part in the Arkansas Derby. In fact, he bothered uh, my long shot, Mystic Dan. Uh, in that race, uh, among others, as he was so rank on the backstretch. He passed a few horses in the stretch, but certainly not his best performance there. Uh, good signs coming back in two weeks, getting Irad Ortiz Jr. Can liberal arts bounce back here? Well, we well we shall see. He'll, he's got some very good past uh, performances to bounce back to, a third in the Southwest, at and then uh, before that at Churchill Downs, he was the winner of the street sense and finished third in the Iroquois uh, as a two-year-old early on the Derby trail. Got 19 points from those various finishes on the Derby trail, 20 points for a win. I'll give him 39. Still would be an outside uh, a chance of getting into the Derby. Yeah, I, I think as things shake out, he probably 
would have a decent chance to get in if he wins this race, which is easier said than done. I don't know what to make of the way he was running down the Arkansas Derby backstretch. That's that's worrisome. But Liberal Arts, as you mentioned, a greatest stakes winner at Churchill Downs. I can see why, why they want to get into the Derby, and they're taking a real big swing here in the Lexington just two weeks after the Kentucky Derby. Another very interesting horse to me, Matt, is Encino. Encino, trained by Brad Cox, a Godolphin homebred. Florent Cheroux will be in the saddle here. Uh, fourth choice on the morning line has me intrigued because he's run three good races and he's getting better each time. They've all come on the all-weather surface at Turfway Park, but I, I think the the, uh, the the sun will be just fine at Keeneland. We know Nyquist was just fine at Keeneland. Uh, and Sino's uh, last race was impressive to me because in that uh, Battaglia win, he beat a horse called Epic Ride, and Epic Ride has run a lot of good races, including a good performance last time in the Bluegrass. Yeah, and, and we know Nyqu Nyquist is... is was very good at Churchill Downs as the Kentucky Derby winner. Uh, um, so uh, it seems like Encino has breeding that is, is good for the dirt. Another one of those Brad Cox runners. And, and I certainly uh, assume that Brad Cox uh, uh, has confidence to run on the dirt. Encino has 20 uh, Derby points uh, in hand already from his victory in the Battaglia at uh, Turfway Park, 20 more will give him 40, which will get him close to getting in the field. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry, Matt. Uh, yeah. yeah of, of the four favorites that we, Stewart is, is the one uh, getting ready for other things. Perhaps we'll see, uh, but probably not the Derby. But I think Hades, Liberal Arts, and Encino all might want in the Kentucky Derby and need a win on Saturday. There's other interesting horses in this race, Matt. Let's uh, let's mention some speed on the outside there. Lucky Jeremy. Lucky Jeremy is son of looking at Lucky. Uh, he's uh, been uh, traveling this year, and he finished third in the Sunland Derby, fifth in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Neither were bad, though. He was then in the stretch, involved in the stretch, before fading a little bit late. Uh, speed is so dangerous. Lucky Jeremy taking his third swing in great stakes racing. Yeah, and I think he's got a chance, certainly breaking from the outside, to get out and uh, maybe get a little bit loose on the lead. And uh, if uh, they can get him to relax and and, and get the distance, uh, uh, he's got a chance of getting a piece of the the top three, I think. Yeah, as we take a look at the top Time form U.S. Pace Projector, Lucky Jeremy, is actually the horse that they see as the uh, likely early leader. But remember, Hades could could vie for favorism here. Hades is a horse who is getting blinkers on, Matt. So I think that could uh, mean that Hades is also uh, pretty likely to be out there, at least making life a little bit more difficult for Lucky Jeremy. We also see that uh, uh, a couple other horses are pretty close. How's your attitude and secret shot? Especially attitude is a long shot. Secret shot has run some good races at Gulfstream Park. I wouldn't be surprised to see the returning the wine steward not too far off the pace as well. Number two. Yeah, I think that's a, it's an it's a interesting pace scenario. One of the rare times where we don't have a fast pace predicted for one of these Derby preps. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen uh, uh, no fast pace there, but uh, could could actually be fast if Hades and the Blinkers have, have uh, uh, some uh, say in his early speed, especially after shuffling back in the Florida Derby and, and the wine steward comes out as a fresh horse. We could indeed have a pretty good pace here. Let's talk about a few others real quick, Matt. Secret Chat has been three good races in Gulfstream Park. None of them more than he'll have to step up from the rail. Dilger, the number three, is coming out of a, uh, a maiden win last time. And Footprint, Footprint is a horse who's only one of seven, but he won his debut at Keeneland. And he's been knocking on the door of some pretty good races of late. Yeah, a little bit of an appearance on the Derby Trail when he was fourth in the uh, in the Gun Runner, and and recently was second in a stakes race at Turfway Park. Yeah, of those long shots, in fact, I would include Lucky Jeremy. 
footprint, I think, is the one that most intrigues me as a horse to use in the exotics as a longer shot. He's just been close all the time. McPeak, Hernandez coming to uh, uh, Keeneland where he broke his maiden footprint could be a horse who runs a good race with some odd in the uh, in the Lexington Stakes. All right, Matt, that's our look at the uh, uh, Lexington's as well as our live long shots in the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks. Before we go, though, let's get a top pick real quick uh, in the Lexington from the first. Yeah, I am going to go with uh, the wine steward, as I alluded to uh, when we were doing the rundown for the race. I think if the wine steward can come back, and make a step forward now as a three-year-old, he could be very, very hard to beat in the Lexington Stakes. Yeah, he could be very hard to beat, but I, I kind of like deterministic last week. I, I don't want him as the favorite. Um, maybe he won't be the favorite. I'm not sure he'll be the favorite, but he's the morning line favorite. J j over six months off, first race as a three-year-old. That, that scares me a little bit. He is the class of the race, and you're right. If he runs uh, uh, to an approved level from what he did last year, then, yeah, I think he'll win this race. But I don't want him as the favorite in his first start as a three-year-old after over six months. I'm going with Encino. His form in Turfway is really good. I've seen so many horses come from that all-weather track at uh, Turfway Park and run well at Keeneland. I think Encino is moving forward for trainer Brad Cox. And he's the one I think is the most likely winner here. Fourth choice on the morning line. That's not bad uh, as far as uh, value in the Lexington. Matt, uh, I'm going to get your uh, mug. There you are. You're back up. I want to get a parting shot from you, my friend, as we move ever closer to the 2024 Kentucky Derby. Ever closer to the Derby, Brian. Uh, you, you said it. Uh, uh, We'll continue our Derby coverage here on uh, Horse Center over the next three weeks uh, leading up to the race. All kinds of information for you, uh, horses we're thinking about, wagers we might consider. Uh, just let us know if there's something you want us to talk about. Uh, leave us a comment. Oh, I like that idea, Matt. Leave a comment no matter what. If, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, do it now, Horse Racing Nation at YouTube. Turn on those notifications. Let's thank our good friend Candace Curtis in the home office for the she does for us every week. And, of course, Time Form US for the projections we use uh, uh, quite a bit. Horse Center, also Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. Thank you to them. But most of all, thank you to all of you folks tuning in. I know we'll have a lot of people watching over the next three weeks for Kentucky Derby time, Matt. We're excited. I hope you're excited. Can I get a, a second parting shot from you for, for Kentucky Derby time, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing I want to make to add to our thank you list is to thank uh, Eclipse Sportswire for the photos of some of the horses that we talked about in our top long shots for the Derby and the Oaks. There you go. Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks, the next few weeks right here on Horse Center. So we'll see you in one week. Until then, good luck at the races. We will see you soon right here on Horse Center.